You've hidden it. You must have done. Why would I hide a piece of your jigsaw, Maureen? I can't finish my 37 years of Last of the Summer Wine jigsaw puzzle when there's a bit of Compo's face missing. For the last time, I am not a jigsaw saboteur. It might surprise you to learn that I have better things to be doing with my time. Like what? Well, like, uh, uh, working. Working? You spent all yesterday playing chess with Peter. Calm down, dear. Unbelievable. Tell me about it. It's International Women's Day next month. Obviously, it would be great to do something in the museum to commemorate it. But what have you just said, Peter? Must everybody have a day now? <laughs> so I'm taking that as a no. We can't do anything. I agree with her. Women aren't treated fairly around here. Thank you, Maureen. Julian's stolen a piece of my last of the summer wine jigsaw. An important bit as well. Not even part of Nora Batty's stock in her out like that. What would possess a person to steal compost face? Morning, everyone. I've, um, I've got that pawn you wanted, Mr Knight. I'm sorry? Alan has been making us a replacement chess piece. Oh, another great use of our caretaker's time. Oh, come on, we've been having to use a pepper pot in its place. Can you imagine the indignity? Even communist Russia could run to the full complement of chess pieces. I'm just glad it wasn't one of the more complicated ones. They take all night. Maybe I could glue them to the board to stop them going missing so often. Do you do jigsaw pieces, Alan? Mm. I might have a commission for you. And when you get a minute, could you change the light in the ladies? We won't be celebrating International Women's Day this year, but it'd be nice to see some small progress. Rito. In the meantime, at least one of you can help me look for that missing piece. If you think I'm spending my day in some daft jigsaw piece hunting cape, you've another thing coming. Though, strangely, that is rather like a plot of The Last of the Summer Wine. A most fitting tribute. And Alan has more pressing matters to attend to. We did fancy a new backgammon set, didn't we, Julian? Oh, come back, Tom. Please come back from London. Plum House by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. Episode 5. The Rather Risky Ramble. As if by magic. Were you just waiting behind the door? No, I was just... just Rub there. one's Sorry. lamp and the genie shall appear. How was that London? Good. Yeah, good. Great conference. Did you check out that little place in Soho I was telling you about? Yes, I did, yep. Yeah. Uh, lots of men with no shirts on having cocktails. The working man gets hot, Tom. He needs to quench his thirst. And dance to Diana Ross, apparently. Ah, still, how's, uh, how have things been back here? Julian's no hidden a bit of my jigsaw. Just don't think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more... Guys, stop, everybody, guys, please stop. Guys, 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 what is going on here? We're arguing, Tom, like we always do. Well, luckily for you, someone's just been on a team management and crisis resolution course. Trust HQ and dancing with boys in basements. You have been a busy old bee. Look, there's no time like the present, so why don't we sort of harness some of my new skills and put them into action? It's such a lovely day. Let's all go and sit out by the gift shop. Bloody hippie. You'll be lighting incense next. Hey, uh, well, we can even use this. I'll pick this up. <laughs> Farsalia, what's that? It looks like something from science fiction. It's a whiteboard, Peter. I'll have to take you to the Apple store sometime. It'll blow your mind. Come on, then. Out we go. I'll fetch some chairs. I've always liked carrying chairs. Right. Can everyone see the whiteboard okay? Oh, the light's reflecting off into my eyes, Tom. What if you moved your head a bit to the side, Maureen? Oh, that's better. I still think it's a trapped in Midger's mind. It's not. Now, the first thing they spoke about at the conference for improving a team's productivity is goal setting. Can anybody tell me why that's important? Because uh, if we all well, came... Anybody aside from Emma? Anybody? Hold on, wait a minute. Yes, Peter? And now the light from the whiteboard shining into my eyes. I'm blind, Tom, like Delius, Milton, Homer, Enrico Dandolo. Yes, Peter. Well, uh, it's important to set goals because it gives a team something to aim towards. You see, the key is that all of your individual goals link into the group's collective objectives. Can you see? Ah, yes. Now I can. Great. I just moved my head a bit. You're right, Tom. It really works. Julian, why don't we start with you? What are your goals? Oh, uh, I'd quite like to be curator of the museum. OK, excellent. So that goal's going to motivate you to work harder, isn't it? But that's my job, old chap. And I certainly won't be relinquishing this position until the end, when my soul flees complaining to the shades below. Yeah, so really, there's no point me putting in too much hard work, is there, Tom? Uh, what are your goals, Maureen? I'm just trying to find my jigsaw piece. Alan? I've always wanted to restore a BSA Bantam. A later model, D175, you know, where the spark plug sits vertical in the cylinder head, or just visit my cousin in Lancaster. I think Tom means more a goal to do with work, Alan. Oh, right. I suppose I don't really have one. 
Keep working? Is that one? OK, wh- why don't we move on to the next point? Interpersonal relationship management. There's none of that stuff goes on here. Not even at the Christmas party. No, what I mean You'd by have that is... You desperate. It's always been slim pickings at Plum House. Well, I quite like the Christmas party. Peter always dresses up as Santa. You're not meant to know it's me, Julian. I don't think Father Christmas traditionally lectures the local school on the poetry of George Pudding. Only if they've been good boys and girls. Uh, No, 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 no. Uh, Focus, guys. I'm talking about building effective work relationships. I thought we could go through one exercise we all had to do on the day, which is that you address a fellow member of staff and mention two things you think they're good at and then one thing that they could maybe improve on. So who'd like to start? I'll have a go. Julian, you're a dirty lying puzzle stealer. That's okay. Well, yeah, you've started quite strongly with the constructive criticism there, Maureen, haven't you? So now we need two compliments for Julian. I don't have any. But at least try one. He's good at stealing things. For the last time, Maureen, I haven't stolen your infernal jigsaw piece. Uh, Julian, why don't you have a go at this exercise with Emma? Fine. Emma, you are quite good at making tea. Right. Quite good. And what's your second compliment? You're also okay at making coffee. And your criticism? You're not very good at anything else. Are you joking? Coming from you, the man who asked me which side the stamp goes on an envelope. We're living in a digital world now, Emma. OK, guys, let's just let's all just calm down, you know. OK, let's move on to the third thing they taught me at the conference. Clarifying roles. OK, so it's important for everyone to understand what the other members of the team actually do. So, for example, what does Julian do? What is his day made up of? What tasks does he have to accomplish at work? Um, I do lots of stuff. Exactly. So, like... Mm, this is a tough one. Well, I, uh, I'm great at solving problems. I'm a cryptic crossword crackerjack. That's what I'm here for. I'm the Plumhouse problem solver. <laughs> you had to ask me how to turn the computer on the other day. As if that's important. We're not living in some digital world quite yet, Emma. You just said... He's a problem that needs solving, not a problem solver. Well, let's not raise our voices. That blasted sun is in my eyes Maybe again. a triumph trident instead of a BSA bantam. Where's my piece of compo, you? Go buy a new one. It's a special anniversary edition. 37 years so, isn't a proper anniversary. Guys, everybody, pl- everybody please be quiet. I mean, look, this, this obviously isn't working. Uh... Maybe it's time for slightly more drastic measures. Sack Julian? What? No, I, I was thinking of a, a group bonding trip, you know, some sort of away day. Well, if we have to, we could go to the gingerbread experience. Why would we go there? I could put some mice in the kitchen, get them shut down. That'd show them, jumped up cocky so on Any other suggestions? I've always wanted to see that new bottle bank in town. I've heard the welding... Hold your horses! I've seen the light. Oh, for goodness sake, just move your head, Peter. No, no, no. We could have a go at Pudding's Horseshoe. Oh, I like the sound of that, Peter. Whatever that is. Pudding's Horseshoe is George Pudding's favourite walk through the fells and valleys. Chock full of magical vistas and heart-stopping panoramas. Do you know what Wordsworth called it? No. A very good walk. Oh, great. And it starts and ends here in Plumhouse. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, like <laughs> I mean, that actually does sound ideal, Peter. Was everybody up for that then, guys? It's not too much walking, is it? I've already got these onions on my feet. They're called bunions. I know what bunions are. These are bigger lumps than that. They're proper (laughs) onion-sized. Has everyone got everything? I think Maureen's brought everything but the kitchen sink. When I do a picnic, I do it properly. What's that? It's Kendall mint cake. It's the size of a brick. You look like a major heroin importer. When you get a little tired carrying all of this stuff around, Maureen. Don't worry, Alan will carry it. She told me to bring my wheelbarrow. We might as well have done it in my car. I like your pink cagoule, Alan. Very fetching. (laughs) That's my second best one, that is. So make sure you don't get it dirty. I've been in trouble on the cagoule front since CNA shut down. And you're certainly taking it seriously, Julian. You look very professional. The latest Gore-Tex all-weather gear this, Tom. Let's just say this isn't my first expedition. I've led a number of previous outings. You look like that Ray Mears fella. Thank you, Maureen. He's a bit tubby as well. That's the sign of an expert survivalist. When you can go to the Amazon rainforest and put on weight, you're doing something right. Yeah, we're just going on a stroll around the Lake District, though. Not even the high bits, apparently. The same principles apply. Has anybody seen Peter? I think that's him coming now. I say, what a day for it. Who's ready for Pudding's Horseshoe? Uh, Peter. Yes, Thomas. Why are you wearing lederhosen? It's the weekend, Thomas. And we're about to embark on a rigorous outdoor pursuit. Faire de l'alpinisme. Das Bergsteigen. 
What did you expect me to wear? Shorts and a T-shirt. I'll have you know that I've had some wonderful times in these old things. I enjoyed the freedom of movement while still being held firm. I once walked across Hampstead Heath wearing these, and there was no end of compliments from all the friendly young men. Shall we get going? As the most experienced hiker here, I propose myself as expedition leader. No objections? Good. Well, the whole point of today, Julian, is that there are no leaders, and we're all here to work together as a team. Although you had better show us the way, Peter, as you know the route best. Oh, trust me, you're in for a treat. Come on, everybody, follow Peter. Be careful with that picnic, Alan. I've got it, Maureen. And look out yonder, past those hills, a curious bunch of daffodils. Aren't they yellow? Aren't they gold? Oh my, they must be getting cold. Perhaps we've heard enough of Pudding's poetry for one day, Peter. Patently good for team morale. Tom. It's definitely making me walk faster. The sooner we get on, the less I have to hear of it. It's me wax crackle, it does. Oh, what a magnificent dry stone wall. Pudding wrote a wonderful ode to a wall. Yes, we heard it earlier. All 34 verses. But that was a different dry stone wall. Hang on, guys. I think this is the same wall from earlier. It does look familiar. Nonsense. Never. Not on your Nelly. I mean, I know walls, and there is absolutely zero chance whatsoever that this is the wall we passed earlier. Impossible. Inconceivable. Absurd. Those are Alan's old wheelbarrow tracks. Well, I suppose it could be the wall from earlier. How do you know they're from Alan's wheelbarrow? Who else is bringing a wheelbarrow up here? Those are definitely from my wheelbarrow. You can see the tyre's slightly flat, and the tread patterns are Dunlop, the discontinued SP9000. Are we lost, Peter? According to this compass, we should still be heading north. That does look like quite an old compass, Peter. It was used by the great man, Pudding himself, given to him by his uncle, a sea captain. Well, left to him after the shipwreck. Yeah, I don't think that compass is working, Peter. I fear you might be right, Tom. The needle hasn't moved in the last 30 years. I can't always have been walking north. Ooh, it's starting to get a bit nippy. Right, guys, don't panic. What we need is to stay out here in the open and let our bodies acclimatise to the cold. Or we could go and take shelter under those trees there until we figure out where we are. I vote for that one. Yes, indeed. There is. Although, what if we just followed Alan's wheelbarrow tracks back to Plum House? Uh, the thing is, for the first couple of hours, I made sure I was mostly wheeling over long grass and loose stones. Why would you do that? I don't like making a mess of a path, Maureen. So we're lost, basically. Not lost, Edith, merely between places of familiarity. Why don't I climb to higher ground to work out where we are? The first rule of survival is always split up. If everyone splits up, we massively increase our chances of being found. I saw that on 999 with my book. Yeah, I don't think that's quite right at all. But maybe you could go take a look, but be careful and come back as soon as you can. We'll be under those trees. Tom, this is hardly dangerous terrain. I once got to the top of Table Mountain in South Africa. Yeah, in a cable car. Show me the picture. Yes, but it was still a very bumpy ride. I must say, Maureen, you've outdone yourself. I mean, I'm as surprised as anyone to say it, but that was actually quite satisfactory. Well done, Peter. A three-course picnic with two different pudding options. You're slowly on your way to being the new Marguerite pattern. At least my wheelbarrow will be easier to push on the way back now. Mm, don't speak too soon. If we find an apple tree, I'll be loading it up for some crumbles and cobblers. I'm getting a little bit worried about Julian. Well, whatever happens, it serves him right. Mm, it is starting to get a little dark. If the light continues to dwindle, we might find ourselves lost up here. Yeah, I think you might have forgotten why we're all sat under the trees in the first place, Peter. What? Come on, I think we should go look for Julian. Or we could just leave him behind. You see, there's only enough flapjack left for the five of us. No, we're all a team. Nobody gets left behind. Fine. You'll have to finish off the Arctic roll, then. He can have my slice of flapjack. I broke two molars and a canine the last time I had some. <clears throat> Up we get, then, guys. Let's get moving. What a motivator you are, Tom. Mr. Motivator. That's what we should call you. <laughs> well, not putting on a multicoloured leotard, Peter. Was that an option? I wish you'd told me sooner. Have you got one with you? Forget I said anything. Help! Somebody! Anybody! That's Julian, in the pinfold. Uh, hang on. Oh. Oh. You all right? I tripped a couple of hours ago. I think I've broken my ankle. I haven't looked at it, but I'm 
pretty sure the bone's sticking out. No, Julian, it's really not. You've probably just twisted it. Try and stand up. I can't, it hurts. What if we put you in the wheelbarrow, Mr. Julian? It might work like a stretcher. Oh, yeah, they did that on Last of the Summer Wine once. Oh, you and Last of the Summer Wine. Think of the embarrassment. What if somebody saw me? It's either that or we leave you here. So, up you get, on the count of three. One, two... Oh, oh. No, the pain's too much. I mean, serious pain. Childbirth pain. But worse. I'm on the verge of losing consciousness. You'll have to go and get help. Oh, calm down. I remember when you stapled your finger and begged the paramedics for morphine. Talking of fingers, I can't help but point one in your direction, Julian. I do rather feel that you ruined this trip for us. Me? But, Peter, you got us lost. Ah, but that's just part of the fun of Pudding's Horseshoe. If there was an actual agreed-upon route, everyone would be doing it. Well, I think it's Tom's fault for making us come out here in the first place. Uh, it's nobody's fault, even though technically it was Peter who got us lost. Look, I just see this as an opportunity to work together as a team. So, Alan, Maureen and Peter, you stay here and look after Julian. Uh, Emma and I will go and try and find a spot where we can get some phone reception. But if he's dead by the time you get back, don't go blaming us. Dead? Would you like some angel delight, Julian? It really is ambrosia. Don't be daft, Peter. Ambrosia's custard. Sometimes rice pudding. This is so typical of Julian. We once did an Easter egg hunt for the local school and he set cryptic crossword clues. It took so long to find them. Well, the Easter eggs? The children. He wasn't popular. Fortunately, they were all found safe and well. They just got bored and wandered off to a local park. Of course, Peter had to enter as well, given his sweet tooth. He got rather into it and caught a train all the way down to Egham, convinced one of the clues hinted at that area. He wasn't happy when he got back. They didn't speak for a while. I don't know how you cope with them. It's exhausting just keeping them on a straight and narrow. Well, it's getting easier. Really? I mean... <laughs> We're currently trying to contact the emergency services on their behalf. No, I mean, I've got you now. To help me. Not that I need help, but, you know, it's nice having you here. Oh, right, well, that's kind of you, dear, you know. Unless so. we all have to spend the night outside and end up getting hypothermia, then I'd rather you'd stayed in London. Yeah? Yeah, that's fair enough, I mean. OK, let's keep looking for some signal. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I've been gone ages, hours. Can you adjust this woolly hat, please? It's a, it's a bit tight and hurting my head. Oh, stop mourning. It's only been 20 minutes. And you've got arms, haven't you? Yeah, but I'm busy eating. Trying to keep my strength up. For a person who's supposedly seriously injured, you're doing an awful lot of eating. And gassing. Why can't you be seriously injured like a normal person? Is there any more of this angel delight? <laughs> Why aren't you getting a taste for it? It's like boarding school on a spoon. You can't have finished it already. That was meant for everyone, you chodder. I haven't eaten that much. OK, I finished off the Arctic roll, but I had to throw the flapjack over the wall. It was more like a rock bun made of actual rock. You're like a dustbin, you are. A big, horrible bin bag. What else have we got left in the wheelbarrow, Alan? Don't tell him. Um, the only thing left is the curly sausage casserole. Alan! You what? He can't have eaten everything that was left. What about that Kendall mint cake? I needed something sugary crumbled on my angel delight. Wasn't quite as sweet as what the dinner ladies used to make. Peter, have you heard this? Peter? Is this how it ends, Maureen? Are we all walking through happy valleys, blissfully unaware death is about to grab us by the straps of our lidos? I hope this isn't the end for me, stuck behind a dry stone wall with a pair of drama queens and an empty flask. I'm sorry, Maureen, I don't mean to alarm. I think I've always thought of myself as something of a tragic Captain Oates figure. Don't mention Oaks. You'll make me think of breakfast cereal. I knew we should have brought them Rice Krispies. Still, we wouldn't have had any milk for them now, would we? Thanks to old Mr Milky T. Alan Walsh here. Don't guess at me. I have to have it milky. You know I'm more of a Ribena man. But that milky, Alan... I've known milkshakes were less milk in them. I could murder a sodding milkshake. And I beg your pardon... We might be in a bit of a mess, but there's no need for bad language like that. Thank you very much. That, that's it. What? No curly sausage casserole for you. Peter, I am not the quartermaster, Julian. Supplies are running low. The ancient pagans of these parts fed the sacrificial oxen to a point. Then no more. Sorry? Oh, yeah, it's really worth checking out. Fantastic museum. They've made great progress in the past few years, actually improving access. Tom? Yeah? 
Shut up. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow, yeah. Full moon. Like the night you first got here. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It's like a film. Just me and you up here. Middle of nowhere. Full moon above us. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's definitely, you know, very romantic. Sort of werewolf. Werewolf, um, werewolf film, yeah. That's what I was thinking of, werewolves. Woo! <laughs> werewolf noise. Oh, you got any signal yet? Nope, no signal. I guess we should get them rescued. Pretty bad team building exercise if two thirds of the team never came back. You're such a goody goody, Tom. We should come do this walk again properly sometime, shouldn't we? Just you and me again. No later hosen. No twisted ankles. No wheelbarrow. <laughs> I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say... You know. Look! Phone box! Right, great. Found it already. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> so we just asked for the mountain rescue, do we? Was, I was ringing the police, and then do they get the mountain rescue for us? And kind of like a lifeboat, isn't it? On the fells. Base camp, 13th July. Or thereabouts. Hard to say. Conditions terrible. A cold breeze from the east. You'd be okay with a jumper on, I imagine. But alas, I have no jumper. I've asked Maureen if I can borrow her cardigan. That was the latest argument. Now she crochets in silence. Julian howls in the dark for cowpaw. I see Alan silhouetted against the moon's bright eyes, studying the Bible, the good book. Rita, do you have to keep doing these logs? Can't you just write them down or something? And I'm only being silent because you have to concentrate when you're crocheting. If I get yammering, I know I'll do a dicky stitch, and then I really will be angry. And I'm actually reading a book about birds' eggs, Mr Knight, but it is good. Don't mention birds' eggs. I'd really, really like an egg right now. You said that before you took the train to Egham. Do you have to bring up that blasted Easter egg hunt? Sorry, Peter. Alan, a word in my office. It's just that bit of pinfo over there. Um, OK, Mr Knight. You've gone quiet, Alan. Withdraw. Head in your shell. Everything all right, old boy? Uh, I'm always pretty quiet. Fair point. Listen, I'm bringing you in here because I'm a bit worried about it all. Tom and Emma are a frightful long time coming back. What I want to know is, could you finish off Julian if push came to shove? What? Could you do him in? Dash his brains out with a stone. Bump him off this mortal coil. He's a glutton. A murderer of morale. Um, I really don't think it's going to come to that, Mr Knight. We're only a couple of miles from Plum House, five of us can walk, and there's still that curly sausage casserole. About that, Alan, there's probably only enough for two of us. I dare say they're plotting to eat it themselves right this very moment. Steady on, Mr Knight. They wouldn't do that, would they? You'd be surprised at the depths to which man can descend, Alan, for the last bit of curly sausage casserole. Maybe we could have a little bit of that curly sausage casserole while they're gone, Maureen. But that's for an emergency. Is this not an emergency? Come on. Let's be honest with ourselves. It's only big enough for two people. Me and you are two people, Maureen. Well, I guess we could have a little bite. That's the spirit. But wait, we can't have casserole cold. Fine. Well, what if we set fire to some of your crocheting? They're not burning my crocheting. Oh, come on. You can always make some more. You selfish old... You've not changed, have you? First it's stealing my jigsaw pieces, and Don't now Don't start it... this again. Where's my compo? It's the 37-year anniversary jigsaw. That is not a proper anniversary. In fact, that's it. <coughs> You've lost your share of the curly sausage casserole as well. <coughs> I'm eating it right this instant, on my own, whether you like it or not. Get off it, you! <coughs> I told you, Alan, there's a casserole conspiracy. <coughs> I'm sorry, Peter, but it's every man for himself. Be careful with my wheelbarrow! You can't eat casserole cold! Alan, as we discussed, I think it's time to hit him over the head with that rock. Sorry, what? It wasn't my idea. Go on, do him. He's a jigsaw puzzle thief. Good evening, campers. Are we interrupting? Oh, Tom, Tom, Emma. Emma. The boy, the beautiful boy's return. About time. Well, I'm afraid there's good news and bad news. On the plus side, mountain rescue are on their way. But sadly, we couldn't give them a precise location, as, of course, they'd never heard of Pudding's Horseshoe. We're doomed. They'll never find us. And now it's raining. Well, we all remember what happened as the Titanic sank. Yes, she let go of that Leonardo DiCaprio, didn't she? She was still sad about it when she was an old dear as well. 
Don't know why. Give me shaking Stevens any day. The band played on as the ship slipped beneath the waves. I'd like our end to have something of the same spirit. Alan, my knapsack. There you go, Mr. Knight. It's time for me to raise my flute and sound a tune. Oh, things have gone from bad to worse. Who brings a flute on a walk? Allow me to flop with you one last time. <clears throat> It was very rude of the mountain rescue man to tell me to stop playing in the Land Rover. I'd only just started the second movement. It's terribly bad form to interrupt a fellow andante con moto. He had just rescued us, Peter, but I guess we'd never have been found if it wasn't for your, uh... Music. They said they could hear him half a mile away. Oh, well, some of us were only three feet away. I've still got a headache. Maybe the humble flute will become a mountaineering essential. I don't think so, Peter. And I can't see Lederhosen making a comeback either. Guys, could we please pay attention to the whiteboard? Uh, so how do we use teamwork to help get Julian off the fell side? We should have left him there. Injured? They wouldn't even give him crutches. He's fighting a losing battle here, Tom. Morning. Oh, morning, Alan. Where have you been? Oh, well, um, I've just been finishing the replacement jigsaw piece for Maureen. He's a star. Uh, Give it to you, then. You'd never know. Well, barely. Compo's face is complete. 37 years of last of the summer wine. Done. It looks like the Phantom of the Opera now. Quiet, you. Hey, I've brought you in the local paper. We're on page seven. Page seven? They'll print any old rot these days. I remember when news was news. Oh. Missing plums. They've excelled themselves with that headline. Oh dear, he stuck the boot in the mountain rescue leader. They were completely out of their depth and inappropriately dressed. They were carrying flutes instead of first aid kits. If their attitude to running a museum is anything like their attitude to fell walking, I'm surprised they're still in business. Oh dear. Tom, Tom, Tom. As I always say, all publicity is good publicity. And at least now we can put an end to all of that team building nonsense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From here on out, it's every man and woman for themselves, just like it's always been. Plum House wouldn't run in any other way. And I think we can all agree on that. Absolutely. Quad era demonstrandum. Plum House was written by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. It starred Simon Callow, Jane Horrocks and Miles Jopp, with Tom Bell, Piers Quigley and Louise Ford. The producer was Paul Schlesinger, and it was a hat-trick production for the BBC. Mm-hmm.